What's going on, everybody? Estas here. So the markets did very well today. You guys probably know that at this point. We had the Russell and the NASDAQ each go up almost 3%. We had the S&P close up 2.1 as the Dow went up 1.6%. So we got to break down the markets in this video. We also have to go over some charts and some stocks, and we have to discuss a couple of earnings reports from Disney, Dutch Bros, Matterport, and we'll talk about a couple of other ones. So sit back, relax. Cheers, guys. Make sure to get your 10 stocks from Moomoo, each up to 2500 bucks with a $100 deposit. And don't forget to also get your 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. All of those are linked down below. And with that being said, let's dive into the video. So like I said, and you should know this at this point, Mark has completely exploded today. And we can see we actually rallied in power hour, which goes to show how strong the markets are were today, at least from a bullish perspective, right? It goes to show how strong the bulls were because look at this. If I zoom in, and this is the intraday chart on SPY, by the way, if I zoom in, you guys are going to see we broke out of 418, which we've mentioned before. That was a resistance from a few weeks ago. So we broke out of there. And if you notice throughout the day today, if I pull up my oval tool, you can see we then pulled back afterwards and tested that point multiple times as support, right? We hit 418 here at about 1220 on the East Coast, rallied off of it. We tested it again here at about 3 p.m. heading into power hour, and that's where the rally began. So that goes to show that is uh, a good level or a big level of support now, and the bulls are in charge. The fact that uh, we rallied about, let's see here, percentage-wise, how big of a move that was. Spy went in the last hour from, again, 418 roughly to about <clears throat> 420. It went up 0.3%. Pretty big move there. Pretty decent move. And Triple Q probably went up even more. Let me zoom in and check this out. Uh, yeah, look, it started at 3 p.m. at about... 324.50, we close at almost 326. So this went up about 0.45 to about 0.5% heading into the close. So nice rally into the close today, guys, <clears throat> in power hour overall across the market. And you know why. I mean, at this point, you should know why. It's because of the CPI data that came out this morning. You know, we ended up rallying the second that came out. You can see here, big move on Triple Q this morning. It started at 318.50 at about 8.30 a.m. Once that uh, CPI report came out, it shot up 2% like that. Spy in the same time period, I believe, shot up even, uh, not even more, but a, a little bit less. But still, big, big move from 412.80 to about, let's see here, uh, 418.50. It ran up 1.4% once that CPI report came out. So markets are ripping. And if we look here on the four hour chart, we can see now the fact that we cracked 420. This looks like it's well on its way, spies well on its way to, to going up to test 428. At least the mid 420s, guys, maybe towards 430. And Triple Q, let's go back to that on the four hour chart. We are now right around 326.50, which I told you guys, and we haven't broken that, by the way, but I told you guys in a recent video, last video, I believe, that's a big resistance stemming back from, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, the past, uh, you know, a couple of trading days here in August. So watch out for that point. If Triple Q breaks 327, maybe this goes 330, even higher from that point, we might get a blow off top rally. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. What do you think? I mean, today was a great day. If you're along in the markets, anything, whether you have large caps, whether you have index funds, mid caps, I mean, I can't speak for everybody out there, but a lot of us across the board today, you know, that are along the markets, crushed it, made a lot of money, at least on paper, right? Who knows? Maybe some of you guys sold. Did you guys sell? Let me know in the comments if you sold. But today overall was a uh, it was a great day. And by the looks of it, the way the technicals look like right now, at least based you know in my uh, from my perspective, it doesn't look like things want to slow down quite yet. So let's dive into some individual stocks. If you guys are finding value as always, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe as well. Let's talk about Disney. Disney's a stock that. I have been holding for quite some time. I couldn't even tell you how long I've, I've held uh, Disney. It's been years at this point, you know, and I've been buying more of it recently. I think I bought some in the mid-90s. I, I vividly remember I bought some a little over 100 very recently. I mean, this was um, 
less than two weeks ago. And now look at it, guys. This thing closed at 112 today. Now it's at 120 bucks after the bell. And mind you, it went up 4% heading into this report. And it is up another, percentage-wise here, another 6.5%. So Disney's up 10% considering it closed at 108 yesterday and now it's at 120. This is a massive, massive move for Disney. So if you guys look at that, you're probably like, oh, they ended up beating, beating stocks, right? Yeah, they did, guys. One dollar or uh, yeah, one dollar nine cents EPS versus a dollar flat. So they beat EPS profitable. Great, awesome. Revenue came in at twenty one point five billion dollars versus twenty point four nine billion estimated. So BDPS <clears throat> also beat on revenue. And for Disney Plus subscribers in the quarter, or um, or no, actually for how many they added in the quarter. They did 14.4, so they added 14 million, and now their total subscriber amount for uh, paid subscribers for Disney Plus is right around 152 million dollars. So cheers to that, or not million dollars, million people are uh, or, or accounts, paid subscribers, right? So cheers to that, guys. Cheers to the Disney shareholders, which again, I am one. I've been buying the stock, and uh, you know it's doing well. <clears throat> so uh, yeah. And let's see what else we have here. And mind you, again, they did 152, or they have now, 152 million paid subscribers, 14 in the last quarter. So what growth, I mean, what's the growth rate on that? Um, you know, a little, little over 10, or uh, less than 10%. Roughly, so they're still growing paid subscribers at a decent rate here. Um, you know, roughly whatever eight, ten, twelve percent, whatever the math ends up being. And in terms of the revenue split in the different segments here, 14.11 billion of the revenue came from, and mind you, again, they did 21 billion in the quarter, roughly 14 of it came from media, entertainment, and distribution revenue. 7 million or 7 billion rather of it roughly came from the parks business experiences and products which I mentioned before guys I'm going to be in Disney here pretty soon in the end of August and I'm going to see what it's like and I'll let you guys know maybe I'll make some content out there I might we'll see I probably will because I love freaking making content I can't stop you know it's like um it's fun man you know this is this is what I do you know it's what I do across all platforms here so yeah, I mean, what do you think? Disney ripping. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Again, I'm going to Disney. I'll let you guys know what it's looking like there. But from what I've heard, it's, uh, you know, it's it's packed. And the numbers are showing, hey, these numbers are uh, looking good. You know, these numbers are coming in decent. They beat revenue, EPS. What can I say here, guys? So it's reversing. And mind you, it's very overbought. I'll be honest. It's overbought in the short term. So be careful. And for me, I don't really care what it does in the short term because this is a long term investment. Not looking to hold it for, uh, you know, just a week or two. I'm holding this 5, 10, 15 plus years. And hopefully they start paying a dividend. I mean, I don't care that they're not paying a dividend now. But in the future, you know, maybe 10, 15 years from now. It'd be nice if they reinstate that dividend and, you know, by that point, you know, 10, 15 years, hey, I might want to use some of that dividend income. You know what I mean, guys? So, yeah, Disney is um, it's looking good. What do you guys think about it? Let's talk about Dutch Bros. I've never had Dutch Bros. A lot of you guys have commented about it and told me to try it. I've never had it, and to be honest, I've never even seen one here in my area. I'm on the East Coast. Are they even on the East Coast? Um, in the East Coast, I mean... I don't know. I heard it's just a West Coast spot. Maybe I'm wrong on that. They're probably expanding. I might have to do a little bit more research on that. But they are up now after the bell. And mind you, they went up on the day 3.5%, closed at 44 bucks a share. Now the stock is up to 45.50. So it's up another dollar 50, about 4% here after the bell. So they missed EPS, but they did make a profit, guys. Five cents a share versus the seven cent estimate. So they missed, but again, did make a profit and revenue came in at 186.4 million dollars versus 182 million estimated. So they beat revenue. I guess that's a good sign there. And last I checked, I didn't see anything on guidance. Let me double check here for you guys though. Um oh, it looks like it says they raised their revenue guidance, full year 22 revenue guidance. Let's see what they raised it to. Um I'm not seeing it here. Uh no, it says 
They're looking to do at least $715 million for the full year 22 versus the previous outlook of $700 million, and the uh, analysts were looking at about seven thirteen. So that's good. You know, that's good. They're pretty much reaffirming what the analysts were looking at, a little bit higher than the analysts. That's going to cause the stock to move up. That's what we're seeing. And look at this. The ascending triangle's playing out. I would not be surprised, no joke, guys, if we saw more upside in Dutch Bros, whether it goes to the mid-50s, $50, high 40s, I don't know. But I do think there could be more upside here at some point in the short term. So, yeah, take a look at it. BROS Bros is the ticker. Matterport is another one that we got to look at, guys, which has been just completely destroyed. This, this is a stock that was very hyped up about a year or two ago. You guys remember, um, it was $37. Oh, my gosh. Then it hit $3 a couple of weeks ago, which is nuts. So this thing was down at one point. 93%, 92%, which is a big drop for uh, for a stock, obviously. And, you know, a lot of companies that go down 95%, they never come back. They go out of business. And I haven't done much research into Matterport to tell you with confidence, oh, yes, this is going to go out of business, or yes, this is going to be the company that avoids going out of business. But at this point, it is what it is. Reality is it's down 95% roughly, and they're trying to turn things around, and they're in an industry that is pretty interesting. If you guys haven't done research into Matterport, they have these cool, uh, you know, the, I don't even know how to describe it, like these cameras. They're used for, um, you know, a lot of people use them for real estate properties where you can take, you know, 3D videos, and it's just pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, go look into it for sure. Go do that. Uh, and, we can see here the stock went up 10% on the day. And here after the bell, it is up another 70 cents, which for a stock that's five bucks, guys, that's a lot. We're talking 12%. So this thing went up 9.5% during the day. Now it's up 12% after the bell. We're up 20%, over 20% on the day from yesterday's close. So they did negative 12 cents versus negative 14 cents estimated on, on uh, EPS. So they beat that on a revenue of 28.48 million versus 29.6 that missed. And they see Q3 EPS of negative 15 and negative 13 cents versus negative 13 cents estimated. And they see sales around 35 to 37 million with full year sales of 138. And this is why the stock's moving up, guys. They see full year sales for this year of 132 to 138 million versus 127.47 million estimated. So guidance is up. That's very good. Uh, and the stock's loving it. That's why it's moving up, even though they missed on revenue for the past quarter and they're still unprofitable, which is expected, guys. This stock is not looking to be profitable. This company's not looking to be profitable. They're looking to grow and get out of this hole because they're in a hole right now, no doubt about it. And I haven't done much research into it, like I said, but I guarantee if I pull up the balance sheet, if I look at the cash flow statement, if I look at income state, if I look at all the numbers and do a little deeper dive into it, you know, do some financial analysis, I'm sure there's some problems under the hood, which is causing this ridiculous drop. And I'm sure they're issuing a lot of shares. They probably have to to avoid going bankrupt. You know, there's a lot going on here, I bet. So Matterport, MTTR, watch out for it. It's very risky. I'm looking at it as a trade. Let me, um, let me, uh, what's the word here? Clarify there. I'm looking at it as a trade, not as a long-term play, because again, it is quite risky. Now let's look at Bumble, BMBL, which admittedly I've never used Bumble in my life. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, using the app, I have no experience with that, but the stock is yeah, the the stock's not looking good. Let's just put it that way. It closed at thirty four fifty today. Now it's at thirty bucks. It's hanging on by a thread above thirty bucks, meaning it is now at the bottom of this channel that I just drew out. Clearly a falling knife under the moving averages, and we're down after the bell about fifteen percent. Oh my goodness, fifteen percent. So they did EPS of negative three cents. They lost money versus the negative one cent estimate. So they missed on EPS and they ended up beating on revenue. Two twenty point four five mil versus two nineteen point four four mil estimated. So Mixed bag earnings, and there's got to be something I'm missing here. Probably uh, guidance. It's got to be guidance. Let me double check, guys. Um, let's see here. They see Q3 sales of 236 to 240 million versus 244 million. All right, that's under the estimate. There you go. And they see full year 22 sales 920 to 930 versus 934 estimate. 
That's also under the uh, the estimates. So guidance for full year sales, the next quarter sales, both of those metrics, week. And, hey, that's all it takes these days, guys. That's all it takes for a stock to get destroyed, and we're seeing it right before our eyes here with Bumble. So I got I to gotta take a drink to that, guys. Let me get some of this uh, Snapple tea right here because this thing's getting destroyed. And, honestly, it might be a play if we do get – the dust to settle in the, the low 30s, but I'm not banking on that quite yet. We have to wait and see how that ends up playing out. So let me get a little bit of this right here, guys. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in, as always. So, uh, yeah, let's see what else is going on. Those are four companies that reported. I think we had a couple of other ones this morning. Not many companies that a lot of people are tracking, but I could pull it up on my phone really quickly. I go to Earnings Whispers. They're not a sponsor, but they have a nice, um, you know, layout on the Instagram here. Let me see here, guys. Uh, this morning we had Jack in the Box, Jumia, Wix. I don't even know any of these. I'm guessing Wix is W-I-X. I mean, that'd be smart if that was their ticker, right? Of course. There it is. So they reported. We might as well look at theirs. They did EPS of negative 14 cents versus negative 28 a year ago. So uh, losses are narrowing here, which is good. Revenue, 345 mil versus 344 mil estimated. So they beat revenue. Losses are narrowing. They cut their full year 22 outlook, it looks like, here. On what, though? Maybe revenue. Uh, I got to look deeper into that. But Wix ended up not not too bad. You know, it's uh, lost our narrowing. Stock's moving up. Wow, 12% on the day. Big move. So this is reversing. You guys can see it's gone down a lot in the past couple of months. Uh, but now it's finally starting to reverse out of these moving averages. Let me see what else we got going on here. JMIA, Jumia. Do you guys remember this one? I remember this one vividly because a lot of people were trading it. During 2020, 2021, look at this. It went up to $69 a freaking share, 70 bucks a share. Now it's at $8 a share. They ended up doing, and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, this is a company that's located in Africa. I forget exactly where in Africa. Uh, I, I could be wrong on that. If I remember correctly, though, this is Africa. Anyway, um, let, let me see here. They ended up doing, it's not even showing it. Uh, actually, no. 57 million in sales up from 40 million a year ago, which is what? Growth of 40, 40 ish percent, 45 <clears throat> percent year over year. Not too bad. And they see adjusted EBITDA for full year 22 at about 200 million, 220 million. Wow, that's actually what? I got to look deeper into that. That's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I got to look deeper into that. But overall, I mean, it's, it's, it's starting to reverse. We have the Golden Cross, multi-week high. We're now above $8 a share, 20% green day today. Holy smokes, that's insane. So I'm actually going to set my alert at maybe 850. You guys can see here 850 was a high from a couple of weeks ago. Let me show you guys this. Hold on. 850, mark is at or above. There we go. It was the high from the beginning of June. So actually two months ago, more than a couple of weeks ago. So watch out for that on Jumia. Let me see how long we've been in here. 18 minutes. All right. We might, we might have to wrap this up guys. If you're, uh, if you're still in here, make sure to get those 10 stocks. If you haven't done so already free money and the 12 stocks, all those are down below 10 for Moomoo, 12 from Weeble. And of course I appreciate you all for being here. And I'm staring at my phone here because we might actually, there's really no other uh, earnings from today. Tomorrow, though, is a pretty big day, or uh, not really tomorrow, but actually, yeah, really, it's it's not many companies. We have Six Flags tomorrow, Veru, we have Hut8, we have Rivian, that's one that we'll talk about, Illumina, and then on Friday, let's see here, not really many that, that are uh, drawing attention to me. So, I guess that's it. We can wrap the video up there. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, join my Patreon, check it out, link down below. If you guys want to just check it out, feel free to join. Shoot me an email at stas at stasurfest.com if you have any questions. And again, get those 10 stocks from Moomoo with a $100 deposit and the 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. All those free stocks, free money are linked down below. And again, all those links help out the channel. And without you guys, this would not be possible. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, peace out.